WSMV TV. Bringing you Demetria Kalodimos and Jeff McAtee with the news. Rudy Kalis with sports. And Bill Hall's weather. On the scene at 6. Good evening. A Bordeaux nursing home is under fire tonight. Accused of neglecting a patient. Allegations have surfaced that Nashville Metro Bordeaux nursing home kept an elderly woman in restraints for periods of up to 10 hours. Ann Generelli has the story. From the outside, Nashville Metro Bordeaux nursing home looks serene. But we've learned what may have taken place on the inside is not so peaceful. The uh, patient was in a vest restraint and that vest restraint was tied to the bed. Department of Health attorney Mary Beth Franklin is talking about patient Louise Johnson. The Nashville resident called this home for nearly 30 years. The treatment she received at Bordeaux only 10 days before her death is now being investigated by the State Department of Health. She was found at uh, around 7.30 in the morning uh, with her head caught between the bed and the bed rail and uh, the rest of her body apparently on the floor. She was trying to get out. It would appear so. Trying to get out because according to this document from the state, Johnson had been restrained from 1130 at night until 730 the following morning, then again for another 12 hours. Attorneys say the allegations against Bordeaux are considered serious. There are new federal guidelines which specify patients under restraint have to be checked on every 30 minutes. According to this report, that did not happen here. Bordeaux Hospital cooperated fully with the Department of Health in the review of this alleged incident. Wayne Hayes is the hospital's chief administrator. We, as far as we can determine, we did nothing wrong, but of course uh, it is under review and I am not prepared to uh, speculate any farther. But Hayes did tell me the nursing home will likely appeal the state's $1,000 fine and written assessment. An assessment that also says the staff here caused physical pain and injury to Johnson. The home now has five days to respond to the allegations. If it appeals, as the director told me it would, Louise Johnson's 29 years spent behind these doors will be scrutinized by a state panel out in the open. Ann Generelli, the Channel 4 News. Nashville cab drivers vowed not to let two alleged murderers slip through the legal crack. And today they showed up in full force to see the second person accused of killing cab driver Glenn Pruitt make his first court appearance. And Annette Noel reports Pruitt's family was also there, making an unusual plea for justice. If you drove by the juvenile court building on 2nd Avenue this afternoon, the man holding this sign was not asking for money or food. Danny Earp's cousin, Glenn Pruitt, was killed execution style after he was kidnapped in his own cab and robbed. Frustrated with the justice system, he says protects juveniles who commit violent crimes, Earp was asking for the public's support. Letting uh, people stay in jail for 20 or 30 years before we execute them is ridiculous. It's, it's costing us money on our, on our taxes. And my cousin died instantly. He died on his knees begging for his life. And now these people here would probably be out on the street in five or six years to commit another crime. Cab drivers and family members waited for hours to hear the evidence against 16-year-old Lorenza Inslee. But when the time came, no evidence was presented. Inslee's attorney, Gary Temple, asked for a psychological evaluation. There's been some issues in the past that have come up, such as he could be mentally retarded. So we're going to send him off and have him evaluated. In the juvenile system, he has the right to know that if they are going to transfer him into the adult system. The day Inslee was arrested, he was smiling, and even with cab drivers glaring at him, he was smiling today. Temple says Inslee was just a witness to the murder allegedly committed by 21-year-old Mario Pendergrass, and that Inslee doesn't really understand what has happened. If it comes back that he is retarded and he's not mentally competent to go downtown, then that's a very big issue that the juvenile court will deal with. But Nashville cab company it's manager easily. Tommy Golson doesn't buy the idea that Inslee may not be competent to stand trial. If he's crazy, we're all crazy. You know, he, ain't, he ain't any more crazy than we are. The judge has allowed 30 days for the psychological evaluation. When that's complete, Inslee's attorney has 72 hours to notify the court that he wants a preliminary hearing. And it will probably be at that hearing when the judge decides if Lorenza Inslee will be tried as an adult. Annette Knoll, the Channel 4 News.
Did the justice system fail her? Yesterday, Veronica Rhodes was shot and stabbed to death three weeks after her ex-boyfriend was arrested for allegedly raping her. Frederick Martin killed Rhodes, then turned the gun on himself. Police say Martin shot himself to death because he didn't want to return to jail. Martin was released on rape charges after his bond was reduced from $35,000 to just $5,000. General Sessions Judge Donald Washburn made the decision. He was not available today to tell us why. Rhodes' neighbor says she feared for her life after he got out of jail. Later on that night, she caught me before I came in the house. She said, Matty Fred is out. And I said, Veronica, if you mean what you say, don't, don't, don't deal with him. Don't talk to him. Don't let him come around your house. She said, I'm not. I'm not sure. I said, well, just keep your doors locked. She said, if you see anything different, you just give me a call. Frederick Martin was on parole when he was arrested for rape, although at the time of his bond hearing, a violation of parole was not issued. If it had, bond would not have been allowed. An early morning car crash in North Nashville killed a five-week-old infant this morning. As many as nine others, several of whom are children, suffered non-critical injuries. The collision happened just before 7 o'clock this morning on Buena Vista Pike at Buena View Boulevard. Metro police say Lavora Scales was attempting to turn left when she crossed into the path of an oncoming we car. Saw those two cars over there, they clashed into each other. See, the um, brown station wagon was coming this way and the blue was coming this way. And it was on the wrong, the station wagon was on the wrong side of the road and then it just bumped into each other. And that knocked the blue car over here. Police say Ms. Scales' baby boy was in a child restraint device in the front seat. Charges in the accident are pending. The facts were too much for the jury to ignore. Metro Police Officer Lawrence Poindexter was on trial for driving drunk in a city-owned car down the wrong side of the interstate, hitting another vehicle and injuring its driver. This afternoon, the jury delivered its verdict, and Carlos Bain was there. It took the jury just about an hour and a half to come back with the verdict. And when they did, Lawrence Poindexter was devastated. Where well, Mr. Poindexter is charged with vehicle assault, how did you find? Guilty. All right. In count two, the crime of driving under the influence, how did you find? Guilty. Right. Poindexter is guilty of driving under the influence, a misdemeanor, and vehicular assault, which makes the officer a convicted felon. The man Poindexter crashed into says the jury made the right decision. I wish it could have been avoided, but I think he got what he deserved to end it up. You know, I've suffered, my family suffered, nobody seemed to care, and I guess justice finally won out in the end. This is all that's left of Howard Hassel's car. He was driving eastbound on I-40 in Wilson County when Poindexter, going the wrong way, hit him head-on in a police undercover car. Poindexter's blood alcohol level was .15, well over the legal limit. The accident happened almost three years ago. Howard Hassel says it's a wonder the case ever got to court. I mean, it probably because I was pushing it a little bit myself and following behind people that it got to this point. It could have maybe been swept under the rug, even who knows. But I'm, I think I helped to get here and may help a lot of other people down the road later on. Prosecutor Doug Hall didn't want to talk about the case. There will likely be an appeal. Defense attorney Jerry Hunt claims Poindexter was at a disadvantage because the jury only looked at him as a police officer. For that reason, I think that uh, uh, it's just terribly difficult to get a fair trial for a policeman because he's going to be judged at a higher standard. People just don't think a policeman will do wrong. The felony conviction means Lawrence Poindexter will lose his job as a Metro police officer. Metro police officials expect him to resign by tomorrow. Officer Poindexter faces a two to five year prison term. The judge will sentence him in July. As for Howard Hassel, he will be in a Nashville court on Monday. That's when his civil suit starts to try to get money from the city to pay for his medical bills and get him out of bankruptcy. In Wilson County, Carlos Bain, The Channel for News. There is a major change to report in Acme Boot Company's Puerto Rican plans. Acme's new plan in Toalta, Puerto Rico, is at the center of a labor dispute that has made headlines around the country. That's because Acme has opened the plant as it is closing one in Clarksville putting 500 longtime employees out of work. Acme was seeking a U.S. federal tax exemption that would have saved the company millions of dollars. But tonight, Acme announced it has dropped plans to get the controversial tax break. Mike O'Connell first broke this Acme story and went to Puerto Rico to investigate the plant there. Mike, what can we make of all this? 
Well, it's interesting. Uh, this release from the Acme Boot Company's public relations firm came just uh, about 15, 20 minutes ago. And as you can see, it's only three sentences. Acme isn't saying anything. They're referring all questions to the BR, PR company, which isn't saying anything. Uh, I think the interesting thing is the timing of this. It comes on the eve of a boot burning that the labor union that is fighting Acme is, uh, has scheduled for tomorrow. The union has also let it be known that uh, they are planning a boycott of Acme products and they want to get national union support for that. So the timing on this is very interesting. Uh, it also comes about three weeks before Acme was to have a hearing before the Puerto Rican government, which, which the labor union would have been at. Uh, the labor union is fighting this tax exemption. So Acme has just dropped its plans for the tax exemption. But the, the important thing for the people of Clarksville and for the workers there is that ACME still says that it will close the plant in Clarksville. So ACME will not get a tax break, but the plant in Puerto Rico will stay in business, and the ACME plant here in Clarksville closes as scheduled May 21st. What had been the company's position on this tax exemption law all along? Well, it, it, ACME believes that it is entitled to the tax exemption. It said that all along, mm -hmm. and I just talked to the public relations man about 15 minutes ago, and he said we still believe that we're entitled to this tax break. ACME says that this was never the key reason that it was going to Puerto Rico and closing the plant in Clarksville. ACME maintained that it was going to Puerto Rico because it was becoming more of a marketing company and was going to be doing a lot less of the boot making in Puerto Rico that other manufacturers would be making much of the boots and then they would finish them off in Puerto Rico. I'm sure we'll be analyzing this story in the next coming days. Sure. Thank you, Mike. Jeff? There's much more news ahead tonight on The Scene at 6. Coming up next, is it one giant step toward major health care reform for Tennessee lawmakers? You may never have an opportunity like this again because mortgage rates may never be this low again. If you bought your home before 1992, you could be paying $100 or more every month in interest you don't have to pay. That's why First American now offers you over a dozen ways to refinance your home. The time to cut your mortgage payments is now. We're here to help get it done. First American, where banking is still a people business. Vanderbilt football, Nashville's team, on the move and ready for the 93 football season. Bring the family and join the fun and excitement with Jerry DiNardo and his Commodores. You'll see defending national champion Alabama, Auburn, Cincinnati, Georgia, Kentucky, and Navy, all at Vanderbilt Stadium this fall. Get in on the action. Buy your season tickets now. Call 322-GOLD. We're Vanderbilt football, and we're on the move. If people hadn't spoken up, they still might be putting asbestos in our schools. Lead-based paint might be on our homes. And a host of other serious health hazards still might be threatening our children's futures. But people did speak up. And they're helped by lawyers across the country who refuse to let large corporations go unchecked and unchallenged. Men and women whose children face the same future as yours. So remember, no matter who you are or what you do, you can make a difference. Philip Miller, on your side. Wednesday. It's the leap you've been waiting for for years. The final leap. This is where it all started. Sam is back in his own body. I got white hair. Now, all your questions will be answered. All the mysteries will be solved. You are the one who's been leaving me. It's the series finale. Come back one last time to see how it all ends. I want to go home. The final quantum leap. Back at its original night and time. 10, 9 Central NBC tonight. Impossible! How can you store eight rolls of Charmin in that tiny space? By squeezing, Chief. You see, moms need more storage space. So we're taking eight rolls of Charmin and squeezing them. Great idea. We'll call it Space Maker. So you can store twice as much in about the same space. So you don't run out. And it pops back out again. Glad I thought of it. Try new Charmin Space Maker. Remember, if it's not squeezably soft, it's not Charmin. At the state capitol today, the Senate moves Tennessee a step closer to major health care reform for the poor, but only after hospitals strike a deal with the governor's office, a deal that assures an early end to an unpopular tax. Jim Travis reports. If we want to get on with it, 
let's go ahead and pass this bill. It looks simple enough when the state Senate passed 30 to 1 and sent to the governor a bill that lets the state rewrite the Medicaid program of health care for the poor and to qualify for waivers of federal rules to do it. A potential floor battle over this bill was forestalled when a deal was cut between the Tennessee Hospital Association and the McWhorter administration. And the access to health care Ever since Governor McWhorter announced in April a plan to replace Medicaid with TennCare next January and to take in an additional half million medically uninsured Tennesseans, hospitals have poured on the pressure to remove a six and three quarter percent tax on services, a tax that supports more than a third of Medicaid's $2.8 billion cost, a tax rural hospitals like this one in Camden cited as a crushing burden on finances. So this is the deal. We have agreed that we will work with them to do our best to find a way to uh, bring the, the, the uh, repeal date on the tax back to December 31. All of our members believe that one of the most important issues for us was to remove the tax ASAP. Uh, we have done that. The administration has agreed to work with us to do that. I believe that will happen. Now, In return for getting the tax lifted three months early, hospitals have backed off their opposition to the bill Governor McWhorter needed to win federal waivers. Says David Manning, once the bill is signed, the next step is to go to Washington. The ability to, con to, to not make reductions is dependent upon approval of the 10-care waiver. Today's action removes one potential obstacle to the General Assembly's attempt to wrap up business next week or the week after. Controversial bills like one by Clarksville Senator Carol Rice to ban public nudity often consume hours of debate over questions of constitutionality. Repeated deferrals of this and other bills could delay adjournment for several working days. Jim Travis, the Channel for News. Metro firefighters were back at the bargaining table today after rejecting the city's reclassification plan. Union President B.R. Hall says the city's proposal would do away with special assignment and certification pay. Hall says firefighters would have no incentive to go above and beyond the call of duty without the 6% salary adjustment. The membership is now asking to remain under the same pay plan and receive across the board raises of 5% the first year and 3% the remaining two years. Hall says they're not asking for anything more than the mayor already has offered, so he sees no reason for the city not to accept their counteroffer. Tonight, firefighters in Woodlawn, Tennessee, face some fiery allegations. The volunteer firemen are accused of setting more than 50 brush and structure fires over six months. Today, the Montgomery County Grand Jury handed down sealed indictments in the case. County officials say the accused are no longer fighting fires. And coming up from ID4, the sweet singer of the swamplands. One sunny morning, no, no, no. What does it take to really give a man the blues? How about 16 years in the South's toughest prisons? This man known as Leadbelly survived it all with music. I'm Terry Bulger, the story of America's greatest folk singer. Coming up on a special, Bulger's Backroads. Do you remember? The breeze carried a hint of the undiscovered. The sun promised a day of endless adventure. And suddenly, there it was. The beaches of South Carolina always hold the wonder of that first discovery. Discover South Carolina in our free 124-page travel guide. Call 1-800-255-1601. Nobody does it like you, the way that you do. Nobody's got the power to Like you, you can count on Super X. Super X. Count on Super X and American Greetings to make this Mother's Day extra special. Super X carries a complete line of American Greetings Mother's Day and all occasion cards. Plus, with a coupon from this week's Super X ad and any $5 American Greetings purchase, you'll get this beautiful, genuine opal necklace absolutely free. When you want more, we give you more. More of what a drugstore is for. Super X.
Tonight's weather is brought to you by Kroger. And I said, this is a blue ribbon day. Oh, Just excellent. perfect. You couldn't get ah, it. Ah, that's what did it, Jeff. She was talking about this great weather. And, Dimitri, our weather graphics computer's on the blink again. Oh. And so if we don't get through this, uh, I'll come back over and you guys can teach me something about journalism. Or well, something. blame yeah. me. So, <laughs> so we'll try to get through this thing. But if all of a sudden things go... I hope mm. it's not symbolic of something to come. No. I hope not. No. Yeah, okay. But it's, okay. we'll tell them right now we've got a great forecast next five All days. Right, good. And here's a look at the conditions in Nashville so far today. Our low this morning, 53. Our high topping out at 84. For the records, if you keep such things, 37. Our record low on this May Day back in 1957 went to 93 in 1952. And that was also a nasty uh, year for uh, ice storms in 52, for those of you who remember. At uh, the... Uh, uh, records place, the Metro Health Department, uh, air quality, I beg your pardon, the air quality in the city is good today. Pollen count back to its old dirty tricks by being extremely heavy due to grass pollen today. No rainfall this calendar day. Our monthly total for Nashville, uh, officially 1.18, and I guess you say, well, you take that back, barometer breath. We had four inches the other night, so we know a lot of you out there had more than that 1.18 inches with all the flooding. Uh, so far this year, 16.33, we're now 1.08 inches below normal. For the current conditions, we have a sunny sky and 82 degrees, southeast wind at five miles an hour. The uh, barometer is uh, rising at 30.12 inches, and uh, the uh, relative humidity is at 43%. Satellite imagery shows basically uneventful weather over the southeast, just mostly sunny, pleasant weather. They are keeping an eye on this uh, area of thunderstorms uh, just northeast and uh, of the Missouri Boot Hill in and around the Cape Girardeau area as it moves eastward into portions of Kentucky and southern Illinois. Uh, then we have thunderstorms over Texas. We have uh, wintry weather in portions of the uh, northwestern United States as well. The heavier thunderstorms continue over Texas and again this area over portions of Missouri and up through the Appalachians with light rain moving offshore. Here are the uh, temperatures as they come in, mainly uh, 70s and 80s along uh, behind that front in 80s in advance of that front. Cooler readings in and around Utah and portions of uh, Idaho and uh, the Pacific Northwest. Truckee, California, 19 this morning, the nation's cold spot. And Lubbock, Texas today at 2 o'clock at a chilly, uh, hot 89 degrees. You can see it's a sunny day over our area with rain and thunderstorms being held at bay because of high pressure building over the area. Tomorrow it looks like another, as Demetrius said, a blue ribbon day with, again, no rain in the vicinity. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 549, sunset 738. Forecast high temperatures tomorrow all in the mid to upper 80s as far north as Indiana, Ohio, and up through the Appalachians. On Friday, the ridge of high pressure makes its presence more no, more no uh, it really takes over and uh, lets us know that it's going to be a pretty nice Friday as well. On Saturday, that ridge continues to hold firm, and you can see again, rain will be on either side of the eastern United States. And for Sunday, Mother's Day, if all holds true and these features don't fall apart, should be a nice day for that family-type activity outdoors. Well, we made it through that. I want to thank the computer there. No rain, and so here's our forecast for tonight. Looks like a clear, pleasant night with light and variable surface wind and a low of 60. For tomorrow, partly to mostly sunny and hot with a high of 86, low 62, and a south wind flow tomorrow at 10. Five-day forecast, uh, Dimitri and Jeff, is for, there you have it. Lows in the mid to upper 60s, low to mid 60s, and our afternoon highs in the mid to upper 80s. So some pretty nice weather headed our way, and it'll make folk uh, entering our snowbird contest happy as well. Here's some more good news. Okay. okay? And, uh, you know, kids, Snowbird's Pops clock is ticking away. And if you still haven't entered our giveaway, simply send us a postcard with your name, address, phone number, your school name, your homeroom teacher's name, your principal's name, along with your grade level, to Snowbird's Pops, Post Office Box 404, Nashville, Tennessee, 37202. And if you're watching and we select your entry, you'll become Snowbird's Positive Student of the Day and become eligible for a trip for, uh, for four to Disney World. The prize package includes four, ni uh, four nights uh, hotel stay, airfare, car rental, unlimited park entrance, and uh, breakfast with the Disney cost uh, costume characters. So keep watching. You could be uh, our next winner. Snowbird's power of positive students phrase of the day is... It's important to be kind. We'll be back in a second segment to see if old deep pocket snowbirds has a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Bill. Jeff? And next in sports, Monica Sellis talks about her return to tennis. Rudy, Kiel Rudy Kalis, rather, has details. The whole thing, and it's just meant a lot to me, all the
WSMV, the channel for news with 650 WSM and Nashville 95 FM. Partners in bringing you the best news coverage in the Mid-South. If I were going to create the perfect place, I'd start with the North. I would carve out rivers and rolling hills, then ride the moon south and warm the skies with a tropical sun. I would dot the west with little hometowns and fill the east with excitement. Right in the middle, I'd put a great big playground. I would surround it all with water from coast to coast to coast, and I'd give it a name, Florida. Ever 